Hey guys, working on it to uh, finally, hopefully I can get this done. I, mean, I had to remake a thumbnail, it's just a whole little mess, but uh, hopefully you enjoy this completely. Yeah. So to start our tale of Back for Blood, aka Not Left for Dead, uh, this game begins with Walker, Mom, Evangelo, and Holly arriving at the settlement in Evansburg to trade supplies. A horde of mutated ridden suddenly swarm the and overrun Evansburg. The team retreats to Fort Hope, and their commander, General Phillips, aka Plank, has demolished the Washington Crossing Bridge to delay the ridden. At Fort Hope, the team finds more ridden attacking their stronghold and overrunning the town outside its walls. With the help of Hoffman, Carly, Doc, and uh, Jim, then you guys go on a lot of adventures. You know, the levels of this game. Yep. No. What? The whole house has been alerted. So, humanity is introduced to a parasite called the Devil Worm. That sounds kind of like aliens did it. And <laughs> just, uh, just putting it out there. Turning people into undead mutants called Ridden, aka zombies, you know. And the game takes place a year after the beginning of this outbreak. The world is downtrodden and trashed and sometimes does not look good. It, it really doesn't. Some of the colors are muddied and the textures are messed up. And sometimes it could be actually okay. I'm not gonna lie, this game is not as detailed as a Left 4 Dead. But uh, I'll talk more on that in a little bit. A group of veteran survivors called the Cleaners is tasked with fighting the Ridden and defending Fort Hope, a settlement within the fictional Finleyville of Pennsylvania. There is some music in this game, but it is either made from some bands that I keep forgetting the name as we speak, that I should have typed in the script as I typed this, and some just one note songs that probably are not as rememberable as Left 4 Dead, as a prime example. Like, prime example, the special written don't have music cues at all, and it's, it's kind of boring compared to the other one. But the one thing I can say is doing a mission, a character or somebody in your party or multiple characters will comment on the immediate situation and banner with one another, thus adding personality to the characters. Unfortunately, it's not enough personality for any of the characters because you don't really know too much about any of them. You forget something? Maybe I should go to Bridgetown. At least they pay. Are you gonna stay there, bitchin'? Come get some breakfast. Always there when they need me, but they ask me what I want. Yeah, yeah. Coming! Don't suppose anyone's got any eggs. Oh, and bacon. Oh, I would kill for bacon. What the fuck, Marcus? Okay, so the game's primary loop is player versus environment, and you play as a four-person team called uh, Cleaners. You fight your way through levels popular with monsters called Written, and teammates are either controlled by other players or AI bots. With that, you do fight a bunch of special written, but not gonna lie, they all look exactly the same in each of their classes. Like the ones that explode look the same, like the ones that just uh, spit up on you and stuff like that. Which doesn't even create too much of a difference between them. And like I said before, like in Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead has music cues for which special zombies coming out to attack you. So you can kind of already know what's coming out, or your character will announce it in a special type of way. Your characters in this game would just say it and then you know you just randomly see him come out of nowhere but like i said man it's 
it's a little it's a little different a new feature to back for blood that is different from left for dead is the fact that you get cards at the start of each level you will need to build your deck with cards and adjust various elements of gameplay cards help modify aspects such as your health your damage stamina guns bullets and healing all that good stuff and the game will also add corruption cards against you which could hinder your progress in some instances or kind of just be very annoying in others like there are corruption cards where you cannot go through the level flawlessly which you know some people like to do each of the characters have preset attributes like prime example doc has the best healing in the game or can get the best healing depending on how you build her up with your cards and you can purchase upgrades and items with the in-game currency called copper which does help you out a lot of bit but uh let's move on from here who's playing pokemon i am not hmm? i have no idea Giannis. i'm not playing pokemon so I do have mixed feelings on this game. It almost feels like this game is trying as hard as to be Left 4 Dead, but it can't quite make it to the Left 4 Dead level, mainly because of the card system. Like for one, the card system is both broken and it is also annoying at the exact same time, which could lead to many frustrations and deaths or situations where you're screwed because of what the cards are, like the boss cards, which can create many annoying situations, especially if you have two of them together, like boss and fog. But on the other hand, you can get cards that stir you with extra money or start with certain weapons but again there's one problem and it's the fact that the uh, special zombies kind of don't matter in this game at all they all die almost the exact same way at the exact same time and they don't feel special at all not like a left for dead which again all of their zombies even the brutes and bruisers and all of them had differentiations and they all had themes and they all are very freaking cool back for blood does not have any special written that i can remember off the top of my head without saying oh man there's a one with the long arm it's the fat one it's the one that jumps around on the wall oh well, look there are new ones there's a new one that hops on the wall there's a new one that hits you with his hand there's a new one that literally hops on the walls there's a new one that's fat oh man and it just recently added a new one which i can barely remember but at the end of the day this game has its issues and i feel as though back for blood is not ever going to be able to fill the spot of left for dead not in this day and age considering that left for dead is still playable and very very much great now now that you got my thoughts you can go ahead and skip past the final hour if you don't want any spoilers for the ending or the end of the game and of course you can always skip to the recap everything's down below in the video After securing the T5 compound, the cleaners fly back to Fort Hope in a Black Hawk helicopter piloted by Rogers, who you just rescued. They come back to Fort Hope being attacked by a massive borrow ridden called the Abomination. The cleaners weaken the Abomination with the T5 payload before their helicopter crashes, killing Rogers, who you just rescued, by the way, so it was a waste of your time. On the ground, the cleaners neutralize the Abomination together. With Fort Hope saved, Walker rallies the cleaners to hunt down more Abominations and turn the tide against the ridden. The end. Okay, help out like that. This game would have been. Oh my God! Look at the unity here. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Of course, they had to be on the fucking character that almost died. I just didn't want to fucking like, uh, you know, walk around, but I'm gonna close this real quick. Honestly, I have to say this, and I have to say this real fast, that you probably see me walking around. Um, I feel like I, I'm gonna just go play Left 4 Dead sometimes when I'm playing this game, like I said. And again, it can be really fun with four people, but uh, literally by after that, without that, it's just not, it's just an okay game. So, that being said, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good rest of your day.
And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's probably going to be February when you see it. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your time. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Have fun.